you should be responsible for your own learning. And if you outsource that to someone else, the results might be disastrous. This might sound obvious, but I think the problem is widely overlooked, especially by students enrolled in language courses. Hello and welcome to the Hacking Chinese podcast. In this week's episode, we are going to talk about responsibility and being in charge of your own learning and what might happen if you are not. Before we get into that though, I'd like to mention that there is a back to school discount for two of my courses. One of them is for beginners and the other is for more advanced students and they both focus on how to learn, even though the beginner course also teaches you about characters, pronunciation and some words and grammar. If you're interested in that, head over to hackingchinese.com slash courses. And the discount is available until midnight on Wednesday this week, so the end of August in other words. That being said, let's move over to responsibility and being in charge of your own learning. And taking responsibility for your own learning seems like an obvious thing to do. While I don't think that all students would claim that they do it, I think that you would agree that being responsible is good. Yet it took me years to figure out what being responsible for your own learning actually means and what the consequences can be if you're not in charge. I think the reason that most students don't take responsibility for their own learning is that school has taught us not to. Most of our youth is spent within a system where success is defined by teachers and curricula. Follow the teacher, textbook or syllabus is the best way, sometimes the only way, to succeed. Naturally, school is not supposed to be like that. We're not meant to learn natural and social sciences, maths and languages only to get good grades. But that's what it feels like for most students. This means that most people who start learning Chinese as teenagers or young adults simply keep going and assume that if they do what the course requires them to do, everything will be fine. It won't be fine though. One day you'll realize that your Chinese is not as good as it ought to be, or that you've missed many important things. There are plenty of people who have good grades, but still can hardly use the language. We actually have discussed this feeling of your Chinese not being as good as it ought to be on the podcast before, and that was in episode 64. School is about much more than just knowledge, and in practical terms, grades might actually be more important than knowledge. With knowledge, you get to understand the world, people or our society, but with grades, you can get into the right university and then finally find a high-paying job and join the world. When learning Chinese, it's easy to fall into the same mode of thinking and most people do without even realizing it. I certainly did, which is why I'm recording this episode. Learning Chinese as an adult is nothing like learning maths or literature in school. For a huge majority of students, actual proficiency in the language is what counts, not the letter or number on some transcript. In fact, unless your Chinese reaches very advanced levels, the likelihood is that your grades are completely useless. You might need good grades to continue to more advanced courses or to apply for scholarships, but outside of the system itself, nobody cares. So, the earlier you realize that you're in charge, the better. You're learning Chinese for your own benefit, not to please the teacher or meet course requirements. Taking responsibility for your own learning is important whether you're enrolled in a course or not, including if you're still in school or if you're learning on your own. If you trust somebody to take responsibility for you, you will regret it later. The reason for this is rather simple. You have your own goals for learning Chinese, even if you might not have explicitly thought about them much. These goals never completely overlap with the learning goals stated in a course syllabus, and this matters more than you think. Here are a few examples. Most universities have a strong bias in favor of the written language. While there will be oral exercises and things like that, the important exams are all written, not spoken. If you want to focus on the spoken language first, and most people probably should, you need to compensate for that on your own. A similar example is if your course insists on handwriting and maybe even requires you to be able to write all the words you learn by hand, you'll end up spending a majority of your time on characters. This is almost certainly a mistake unless handwriting is an important part of why you are learning Chinese. And for the final example, courses never contain enough support for pronunciation, which means that you're largely left on your own. If you're very good at mimicking and picking up new sounds, this might work, but the result for most students is that they later realize that they should have spent more time with tones and pronunciation early on. 
I have personal experience with all these three, which is why I chose them, and I could list many more. Depending on where you are learning Chinese, you can't always rely on your teacher being competent either, but this is difficult to tell before you reach a more advanced level, and then it will be too late. Sometimes it's small things that are being taught even though they are wrong, but sometimes it's the general approach that just isn't suitable for second language learners. A good example of this is how Chinese characters are taught, and we spent the entirety of episode 3 talking about that, where I presented a 12-step approach to how to not teach Chinese characters to beginners. Another important reason to take responsibility yourself is that it's your Chinese we're talking about. Your proficiency level matters more to you than to anybody else, so you should think twice before outsourcing responsibility to someone else. While your teacher probably cares at least somewhat about your progress, teachers have dozens or even hundreds of students at once and can't possibly cater to each and everyone's needs. Teachers are also constrained by a curriculum, lack of time and resources, and sometimes competence. Social and psychological factors also limit how much you can rely on teachers and courses. A good example of this is pronunciation, which is simply not in focus in most Chinese courses, like I already said, which means it's possible to have a dozen teachers over several semesters and still not know that you have a basic problem with tones, simply because no one told you. I've observed the most egregious pronunciation errors go by without a comment, including students who have studied for a year and still pronounce shi as the English word she, and haven't figured out that a u after j, q, and x is actually u, that's u with two dots. As a beginner, this is fine, take it easy, but not even telling students about these problems is unforgivable in my opinion, especially if we're talking about intermediate or even advanced students. In case you want to learn more about common traps and pitfalls with Chinese pronunciation, specifically as related to pinyin, you can check out episode 76, which was dedicated to just that. And just to be clear here, this is not because teachers are mean or incompetent, or at least that's usually not the case. It's mostly a combination of the constraints I mentioned, along with social and psychological factors. It's uncomfortable to correct someone's pronunciation, especially if they've studied Chinese for a while, and some students make this much worse by becoming angry or upset, as if helping them with their pronunciation is somehow a personal offense. The best approach I've found for getting around this problem is to be clear what your own goals are and communicate that to people who are there to help you. So for example, if you hire a tutor, tell them what you want to practice. If they keep throwing 50 new words at you each lesson, even though you just want to develop fluency, find another tutor. Or if you enroll in a course, compare the curriculum to your goals and talk with the teacher to determine if it's the right course for you. And finally, if you have helpful native speakers around you, let them know that you actually enjoy being corrected on your pronunciation and would appreciate help even though you shouldn't count on them giving it to you because they are your friends, not your tutors. Now, while it's true that you are responsible for your own learning, whether you realize it or not, this doesn't mean that teachers' courses and textbooks are useless. In fact, I think they are all essential for successful learning. But they are just resources, nothing more, nothing less. You should use them in light of where your Chinese is now and where you want it to be in the future. Plot the path yourself, but use whatever resources you have available to get there. As usual, I've written about these things before, so here is a short list of suggested advice for each category of resource. When it comes to teachers, you should check out my series called Training Your Chinese Teacher, and the first one is called just Part 1 Introduction, and I'll put links to these in the description. And this is a series discussing how to get the most out of a teacher. This involves collaborating with the teacher and figuring out what works best for you, matching their competence and personality with your needs and preferences. Second, when it comes to whether or not you should enroll in a course, that's something we discussed in episode 66, and there we talked about the advantages in enrolling in a course and maybe what some of the disadvantages are and how you can mitigate them. Finally, when it comes to textbooks, I also think that these are useful, especially if you use more than one, and this is something we talked about at great length in episode 95. It's true that textbooks leave a lot to be desired, but that doesn't mean we should throw out the baby with the bathwater either, because there's a lot of useful things in textbooks, especially if you use more than one. 
So to round this off, I'd like to say that there are of course great teachers and great courses out there who, if given unlimited time and resources, could guide you to such an extent that you really don't need to take control yourself and don't need to be responsible, but this is exceptionally rare. And another problem is, like I said, how would you know that they actually are capable of doing this as a beginner? This is something that is only clear in hindsight. Finding someone who can help you with specific aspects of learning Chinese, such as speaking practice, essay writing and the like, it's not too hard, but finding someone you can trust with the bigger picture is not realistic. And besides, you know what you want and what you prefer, so the person in charge of the bigger picture should be you. So it's better then to stay active yourself, explore different options and discuss your learning with fellow learners and teachers, of course. Read what other people have to say, and right now you're listening to what one person thinks at least. But don't blindly trust others to make important decisions for you. Learn enough to make them on your own. This means that the biggest mistake you can make is to enroll in a course, lean back and think that you'll learn Chinese if you just do what you're told. You will of course learn some Chinese, but like I said before, you will at some point realize that you've actually wasted a lot of time and energy doing things you really didn't need to, or doing something in a way that wasn't very good. Naturally, being in charge and taking responsibility yourself also takes some energy, but at least you can make sure you end up where you want to be. In a way, you can see Hacking Chinese, and I mean both the podcast and all the almost 500 free articles on the website, as an attempt to help people become independent students. Have a look around if you haven't already, but if you want more structured advice, and I mean not everybody wants to read 500 articles about disparate topics, you can check out the courses that I mentioned, and it's the beginner course, Unlocking Chinese, and there is also a less level dependent course, so it's for intermediate and advanced students, and it's called Hacking Chinese, a practical guide to learning Mandarin. And as usual, I've put links in the description of this episode. Thank you for tuning in to the Hacking Chinese podcast. If you like this episode, please share it. More information and inspiration about learning and teaching Chinese can be found at hackingchinese.com. See you in the next episode, and until then, good luck with your studies!